When discussing the topic of sensitivity, people tend to mention a few main things. But what if I told you that sense is more than just the number you pick, or the DPI on your mouse, or the dead zone on your controller? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Spencer, aka King Downing, and in this video, we will be discussing exactly which settings affect sensitivity, what they mean, and what you can do to be more confident and win more gunfights. Let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is good posture. Sitting in a comfortable position is one of the best ways that you can set yourself up physically to give you the best results in game. Whether you're gaming from the couch or in a gaming chair, you want to find consistency in the way you sit. It's important to sit up straight and to make sure that your chair, desk, and monitor are at a good height so that you're never struggling for range of motion or finding yourself in a position where you're hunched over. Gaming for prolonged periods can be tiring and will result in inconsistent aim if you're not comfortable. So get comfy! Next, let's talk about some of the fundamental settings that need to be set up in order for you to establish your sensitivity. Starting with PC, you'll want to set up your mouse DPI and Hertz. So what is DPI? DPI is a metric that stands for how many dots per inch your mouse reads at a time and affects how fast your mouse cursor moves across the screen. Standard DPI values are usually 400, 800, and 1600. I'll be going into the DPI I recommend the most a little bit later on, but for now, go ahead and head into your mouse software and check to make sure that you know what DPI you are on. Next off is Hertz, which is the pulling rate on your mouse. You want to set that to 1000 Hertz if you have the option, as one millisecond response time is currently the best setting for gaming. If you're on controller, you'll have dead zones. The dead zone is the amount your stick needs to move before the input is recognized in the game. The bigger the dead zone, the more the stick needs to move before it registers the input. There is a limit to that, however, and too low of a dead zone will result in stick drift. So you're going to want to start low and bump the value up one at a time until your character is no longer turning on their own. For PlayStation, the recommended dead zone is 5%. For Xbox, the recommended dead zone is 7%. Next, I'm going to cover coefficient. In some games like Call of Duty, it's called monitor distance coefficient. And in other games like Battlefield, it's referred to as uniform soldier aiming. Simply put, coefficient is the horizontal focal point on your monitor that the game will tie each scope to. Taking a look at this demonstration from mousesensitivity.com, we can see that setting your coefficient to a value similar to that of 25% of your horizontal monitor distance will result in the scopes matching up exactly one-fourth of the way across the screen. Anything beyond that point, and they will no longer be consistent. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the value of 25% does not equal a coefficient of 25, but rather is the percentage value of your horizontal monitor distance. I'll explain more on the actual coefficient values in just a second, but take a look at this example where a value equal to that of 100% horizontal monitor distance was chosen, and you'll notice how the scopes all tie up perfectly to the edge of the screen, which in this case was the edge of the building. Before I recommend a coefficient, we first need to answer the question of how does one derive a coefficient value? This is simply done by dividing an aspect ratio's horizontal length by its vertical height. If you notice, most games coefficient is set to 133 by default. This is a value which originates from 4x3 monitors that were popular up until the late 1990s and early 2000s and sought to match scopes at 100% horizontal monitor distance by dividing 4x3, which equals 133 repeating or simply 133. This value is outdated in the age of 16x9 displays and the value one should actually use if trying to match up scopes at 100% horizontal monitor distance for 
any 16x9 display is 177 repeating, or simply 178. In the end, the way to know if you are matching scopes properly at 100% horizontal monitor distance should be done by dividing the resolution's width by its height. On the other end of the spectrum, many people choose to match at 0% horizontal monitor distance, which effectively ties your aiming focal point to the center of your screen and makes it so that you have to move your mouse the same distance when the target is the same size behind whatever scope you're using at that time. We can visualize this by taking a look at another example from mousesensitivity.com and you can see how the individual has to move their mouse the same distance and is able to track at the same speed when the targets are all the same size behind the differing scopes. If you've done any research on the topic, you'll know that most people say match at 100% monitor distance aka 178 for flicks and match at 0% for tracking. Well, I've played both for quite a while and when I was on 178, it felt quite nice, especially with the higher zoomed optics allowing me to have more range of motion and helped when my targets weren't dead center on my screen. And when I switched to 0% coefficient, I enjoyed it as well. This allowed me to raise my overall sense a bit higher and gave uniformity between the different scopes which helped me find a consistent speed at which I could track targets at longer ranges. But what if I told you there was a third value? that was even better than the other two. Yeah, so I had this really dramatic build up part, but it was probably copyrighted, so I took it out and you should just boop the like button instead. Thanks. Yep, that's right. See, someone named MechSquirrel underscore Jedi on mousesensitivity.com was tired of being told that 0% was the best coefficient and starting 11 years ago, sought out to determine if there really was a best coefficient. Turns out there is, and it's 121. The reason behind it goes as follows. Jedi took note of monitor distance deviations at multiple points, and found that no matter if he used 100% monitor distance or 0% monitor distance, there was still quite a bit of deviation between the points. So, he took the monitor distance of 100% and 0% and averaged them out. Manually adjusting the sensitivity so that the 360 distance match the average for both values, he noticed that he could achieve the smallest deviations for all points by applying what is now known as the Jedi trick. Essentially, what this means is that if using the Jedi trick of 121 coefficient, you will find more consistency between fights at any range and engaged at any angle, whether it's above, to the side, or just straight up at a wacky angle, simply because it is going to best emulate how your cursor moves when navigating the desktop. I am currently using the Jedi trick and absolutely loving it. Well, goddamn. Okay, now that we have all the technical jargon out of the way, let's hop into a game and get started on finding your perfect sensitivity. Whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard, the same general rules apply to each. The goal is to find a sense at which you are able to comfortably maneuver around the map, while at the same time being able to properly aim when scoped in on your target. For controller players, I recommend to first run around the map and begin turning about. You want to find a sense that allows you to quickly turn both 90 and 180 degrees. Very rarely will you find yourself in a situation where you'll have to do a full 360, and if you do, you're probably already dead anyways, so it's best to tailor your sense for 90 and 180 degree turns. Most controller players will already have this sense established, but in case you don't, you just want to run around the map until you feel like you're making the maneuvers in-game as they play out in your head. Now, I know I said we were done with the technical jargon, but before we get started on finding your perfect sensitivity, we need to first establish the correlation between in-game sense and DPI for all the folks on PC. For most games like Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Overwatch, you can usually just double your DPI and then half your in-game sense and still achieve the same sensitivity in-game. However, some games like Battlefield have weird multipliers on them, so I highly recommend using mousesensitivity.com when converting between senses. This is important for us to note today because while studies show that 1600 DPI is the best DPI to use since it has the lowest latency, it is going to be far too high for us to find a neatly tailored sense in game. So go to your mouse software and turn the DPI down to 400 so that you can have more control over your sensitivity with the in-game slider. 
To finish finding your perfect sense on controller, we'll be partially implementing the method we'll be using today to find the perfect sense for mouse and keyboard. What you'll first want to do is find something at head level on the map. Next, you want to begin strafing back and forth and slowly turning down your controller sense until you can begin to track the target with ease. Notice here how my friend has established his hip sense by running around the map and is now finding the sense that best matches his dexterity for tracking the target. I recommend doing just that and starting with that sense that you found you best move around the map at, begin turning it down one by one until you feel that you can stay on the desired target. Once you have found that value, the rest is simple. You'll just divide the sensitivity at which you can track by the sensitivity at which you can move around the map to get a percentage value which can now be applied to your scope sensitivities. For mouse and keyboard, we'll be using a similar method called the perfect sensitivity approximation method, otherwise known as the PSA method. I've included a link to the PSA calculator in the description, so go ahead and open that and hop onto your favorite game. Remember to have your DPI set to 400 and begin by finding an object on the map that is head level. For today's example, I'll be using this bot in Apex Legends, but I know that objects like the top of the cone in Fortnite, or the bots in the Overwatch range, or even the spot my friend was using in Call of Duty work quite well too if you don't have Apex downloaded. Begin by strafing back and forth at close range and slowly backing up so you get a good sense of what feels good in different scenarios. I started with the default value of 5 at 400 dpi, and the calculator gave me two new sensitivities, a low and a high sense. Starting with the low sense, I began to do the strafes and after trying the high sense, I quickly determined that the low sense felt much more comfortable. I then went back and forth between the game and the calculator and plugged in the sensitivities until I finally figured out what worked best for me. The main tip I have for the PSA method is don't overthink it. Usually by the 4th, 5th, or 6th iteration, distinguishing between the low and high sense can start to become tricky. So just do your best to try them out each once or twice at most and go with your gut. If you feel like you didn't get conclusive results, you can always try it in a different game or come back on a fresh day when you haven't played any games and do it again. I actually recommend doing this method before you play any games anyways since you're trying to find a good sense based off of this method rather than how you've been playing that day. Don't worry if you've already done it though because it's not the end of the world, it's just not recommended for the best results. Once you've completed this, you can head over to mousesensitivity.com and convert your sensitivity from 400 dpi to 1600 dpi. Make sure that you select the in-game sense instead of the config file on the right since we're going to be doing this from within the game. It's interesting that the sense I found just doing this exercise right now is actually 0.77 when my current sense is 0.81, so it goes to show that the PSA method is definitely great for ballparking a good starting sensitivity. As this video wraps up, I'm going to leave you with a few final pointers. First, FOV does affect sensitivity, and while there is no best FOV, it's best to start low and increase it until you notice downsides or it becomes too much visually. MouseSense.com always lists the vertical and horizontal FOV between games, so feel free to check that out if you're ever curious as to what exactly a certain game's FOV is. Secondly, optimize your keybinds. Setting frequently used buttons to more easier to press keys or controls is huge. When I was on console and I was playing Overwatch, I liked to set my jump button to the right stick in so that I could jump a lot. And on PC, I like to put my most used binds on my mouse for quick access. Third, practice your crosshair placement and tracking on teammates during downtime. Just pick a teammate and trace them as they move. This will help you know exactly what head level is around the map and will also help you practice tracking on unpredictable targets, which will really help in the long run. And finally, be patient with yourself. Practice makes perfect, and now that you have a good base to start from, tailor your settings as you see fit. And most importantly, stay you. I'll see you in the next one. Shake just a little bit.